welcome back here for Renaissance Periodization. Today, we are going to learn tips, tricks, mistakes not to make for the bent over barbell row for hypertrophy. For back hypertrophy, not just lat hypertrophy. A lot of people say, oh, bent row for the lats. Cool, the bent row can be an excellent tool for the lats, but it is more than that. It is an excellent tool for the lats, the spinal erectors, the lower, medium, and upper traps, the rhomboids, and the teres major as well. All of the major muscles that pull or support pulling in the back are awesomely hit by the bent row. Let's take a look step by step at what kind of mistakes are super common and how to fix them. All right, folks, here with Charlie Jung, my training partner, friend, so to speak, and RP's athlete manager at Charlton Banks on Instagram if you want to annoy the living shit out of him. He's going to be demoing bent rows for us. Uh, first mistake is not hinging far enough. What this ends up doing is because you're not bent over very far, it's a cool way to train the traps, I guess, but the rest of your muscles just don't get a huge range of motion and the load you have to use to get the reps you want has to be super high. What this does is it creates a lot of axial loading through your spine, fatigues the shit out of you for all your other back and leg training. It's just not worth the stimulus. So Charlie, go ahead and do some rows where you bend only like a tiny little bit and do this bullshit. You don't even have to do cheat rows. You can, they can be strict, but like people will row right here. Like that's a fine and dandy thing, but how much range of motion are you really getting? Remember full range of motion is better for hypertrophy than partial range, and it's been shown a whole bunch of times in scientific literature. So what Charlie's gonna do is try to hinge as far as he can without rounding his lower back. So he's gonna feel his tight hamstrings. For him, that happens to be all the way to the ground. Do you have to roll all the way to the ground? No, if you can only hinge down to your knees and everything else starts rounding your back, then for the classic barbell bent row, that's as far as you go. But slowly over time, you'll get more flexible. You can go deeper. Some folks, can hinge all the way down to row what would really be below the ground. They'd have to create a deficit for themselves. That's totally awesome. You don't have to go super deep, but don't go super, super high. Feel your whole back opening up. You should at least be at 45 degrees or below in almost every case. Do you have to go all the way to 90 and, and negative degrees? No, that's an option, but at least 45, that's where the negotiation begins. Charlie shows what that looks like. Do a couple of rows so in proper position. So he's gonna get all the way down the ground. You're gonna notice his lower back is nice and tight. His chest is up. He's gonna row into his tummy and back down and row into his tummy and back down. That's a proper bent over row. Next mistake is letting your lower back round during the row. A lot of times this happens, folks trying to go super deep, but they don't have the flexibility. Fundamentally, your risk of injury with rounding the lower back with rowing weights versus deadlift weights isn't super high. And a lot of people who've been rounding their backs for a while can get pretty good at it. And because they've adapted that position, injury risk is not a super huge concern. Although I would still say it's a notable concern. What we really want here is to make sure that as much force is transmitted through the arms and the back and no force is limited with an improper position that doesn't allow a lot of force transduction. Here's the fundamental fact. In many cases of rowing, not all, but many, if you round over your back, you actually can't use your pulling muscles nearly as much because your rounded back isn't a solid transmitter of force and it becomes the limiting factor. A lot of times your erectors will fatigue like that and then all of a sudden it's a movement just for your erectors and not much of anything else. The deadlift's a great move for that. There's another movement called the flexion row, which is a move specifically for that, but for barbell rows, we want the upper back to be working really, really well. So we wanna keep a nice rigid core, to keep our lower back tight. Charlie, show us what it looks like when you round your lower back trying to do rows. So people will reach down and just start rowing from here, right? Look at that cat back. That's fine, but it's not gonna allow us to transmit a ton of force where we want it. How do you fix this? Willfully arch your back, begin to get into neutral spine, Boom, that is a really good starting and holding position for all of your rows. A big part of the purpose of barbell rows is to train your middle traps, your rhomboids, and a bunch of the other musculature there that actually functions to retract the scapula, okay? So when you stretch at the bottom of a row, you should be protracting Sometimes the weight is so heavy that you can't really retract a ton. That's maybe better for machine rows, but at the very least, you should be protracting completely at the bottom while keeping your lower back tight, 
tough trick to do. You don't want to remain rigid and stabilize your scapulae for no reason. I swear to God, half the fucking people on the internet say random shit like you should be keeping your scap stable. Why? There's a ton of musculature attached to your scapulae that actually powers their movement and you want that shit jacked because it gives you a huge back. You want your scapulae to be stretched and protracted at the bottom. Ideally, you want it to come back at the top. Even if it doesn't come back all the way, at least you want that big eccentric stretch. Charlie, show us what it looks like when someone is artificially stable scapula in the row. It's not a dangerous thing. It's just kind of pointless. What they're going to do is roll like that. And then they're sort of just, yep. And it looks like they're cutting the range of motion. Yeah, their elbow is getting straight, but they're missing a lot of good stuff. Now show us what a proper row looks like. On the way down, his back sinks and then comes up and stretches and then contracts and his shoulders and scapulae are moving, which is part of the movement and gives you that awesome, gnarly, especially middle trap development to make you look bulletproof. The next mistake in the row is not letting your arms get to a dead hang. It's part of the same problem as keeping your scapulae completely stable. It doesn't allow you to fully stretch the back musculature. Remember, stretching under tension is a huge hypertrophy stimulator. Dead hang, or if you go to the ground, keep upright enough for it to basically be a dead hang as you touch is way better than stopping arbitrarily. Yeah, of course you can lift more weight if you don't go all the way down, but you're ripping yourself off. Charlie shows what it looks like when someone's just rowing, they touch their tummy, but they end up not going all the way down. So they touch and then they come back up. Yep, and sure, they can get a ton of reps, but look, they're not letting all the back do the work. Now do it properly. Super stretch and up and super big stretch and up. Now we're working. This is what we want. The next problem in the bent row is again, super, super common. Not touching your tummy when you come all the way up. By touching your tummy, you get a standard of where each row ends and begins because hypothetically you're going to a dead hang, which may or may not be the ground, and you're touching your tummy every single time, you know that it's the same range of motion every single time. That means you can track your progress, track your performance, and impose the same degree of stimulus, the needed degree of stimulus, every single time. And let's be fucking totally honest. Why don't people touch their tummy and rows? Because they already failed. They're just trying to flail around a bit more. I have no idea how you count reps like that. They're no longer stimulating what you want. It's just bad news. It's tough to touch your tummy. You'll have to roost the weight on the bar. Just do fewer reps. Or, hey, here's an idea. Fucking get stronger. Charlie shows what it looks like when people don't touch their tummy on the rows. No swinging. That's another problem we'll talk about later, they come up, yeah, you know, so that's sort of a row, yeah, maybe, and then, yeah, who knows, and, you know, partial range of motion. Not a good thing, convincingly touch your tummy every single time. Now, real quick, some people say, where in the tummy should I touch? Honestly, wherever's comfy. Can you touch the lower tummy? Sure, that's more lats, less uh, rhomboids, and uh, upper or middle traps and stuff like that. If you touch higher on the tummy, especially if you start touching to the chest, that's a bit more rear delts, a bit of the more upper back musculature, uh, upper traps, middle traps, rhomboids, so on and so forth. There's no right answer there. Those are all different, very, very awesome variations of rows. And why not take another tip out just on this rant alone? What's better, barbell rows with a normal grip, with a wide grip, underhand, parallel, what are the better rows? Where do I put the bar? There's no correct answer to that. They're all awesome. You can do underhand rows like Dorian Yates did if you feel it where you wanna feel it and it's awesome on your joints and it doesn't feel like a terrible amount of work for very little return. But if you feel really, really good with all the target muscles you're hitting with an overhand grip, that's totally fine. If you try wide grip rows and they feel like shit and they're not for you, try them a couple more times and see if you can work out a technique that works. If you still hate them, you don't have to do them. You can do any kind of row variation you want with grip. They're all super, super awesome as long as you feel it in the target musculature of your back and your joints are not paying a heavy price. two mistakes in one, and they're very, very related. First mistake is using body English, momentum and muscles not targeted in the row to do the work. This happens when people swing their hips, they'll even move their knees, they'll do the chicken dance at the top with their head to move the weight. The purpose of the barbell bent row is not to move the weight. It is to stimulate your back. It is to use your back to move the weight. That's problem number one, and a very related problem that we're gonna demo at the same time is people don't have the same range of motion every single time. Some reps will be for range, some won't. 
How do you count that? How do you track consistently? There's no way to do it. So two things. One, your hips should be completely stable. Only your arms and your scapulae move when you row, period. And second, and because of that, every row touches the tummy or wherever you're touching, whatever, as long as you choose a certain location. And secondly, every row touches the ground and or goes to a dead hang. So Charlie, show us the most dog shit, evil, cheating row you can. Rip yourself off. Yeah, fight to win, brother. Fuck yeah, you're doing something. Something's happening. I like the head movement is really critical. This is what gets your back going, right? But in a proper row, go ahead and demonstrate one solid position. Watch his hips. Go ahead and row, Charlie. His hips are going fucking nowhere because this is not a hip exercise. His scapulae are moving, his arms are moving, and that's all we want. Next mistake is not to control the eccentric or the descent on the row. Remember, eccentric control actually contributes significantly to hypertrophy. It's a good thing, it's a wanted thing. The purpose of a row isn't to get a bunch of rows done, it's to stimulate the muscles doing so. A lot of folks ask, what about pendlay rows? Aren't they great? They're absolutely wonderful for developing strength in the back and the pulling musculature for the sport of weightlifting, which really doesn't have a huge eccentric component. So that's a really low fatigue way in order to develop that sort of concentric strength. But, and the penley row is a great exercise, the big downside is that it's not a controlled eccentric. So penley rows are almost hypertrophy rows for bodybuilding, but not quite. Almost the same thing, the only fix is controlled eccentric. So Charlie, show us basically a penley row, not exactly, but close, where the concentric looks great, there's no hip swinging, but we just drop it right after. Boom, and row, and then boom, right? That's all nice and well. Gravity's taking the weight back down. You don't want gravity to take it unassisted. You wanna fight gravity on the way back because those lengthening contractions of your muscles are very hypertrophic, as are concentric contractions and isometric. We want all three. So Charlie, show us a proper row. Not only are we going up with really good technique, touch gently, but we're controlling. And it doesn't have to be a four second eccentric, just some kind of control is a really, really good idea. Next mistake in the row is to let grip be a limiting factor. If you get strong and for high reps, barbells are really tough to grab for a while. And what you might get to is you're failing because your grip is failing you, not because your back is failing you, which is what you really want. So there are three solutions to this, like with many other exercises. One, get some chalk, really, really good idea. Sometimes chalk isn't enough. When you get really, really strong, your back will outpace you. Straps are a really, really good idea. And the best, of course, are Versa grips. Look them up, they're amazing. They're gonna make it so that every single row, every single pulling movement you do is limited only by your pulling musculature and not your forms. And here's another really interesting, very super related myth I'd like to address, is the idea when, you, when people ask like, hey, should I be using straps or Versa grips or chalk? Uh, a lot of times they don't say chalk, just straps or Versa grips for back work, for rows. And a lot of people say, fuck that you fucking gotta get your fucking whole body strong, so it's a fucking crutch, you know? Like, yeah, if you're training for the unassisted row Olympics, sure, then you don't wanna use, you know, anything other than rowing, and you wanna use your own hands, because that's what it's gonna come down to. But the thing is, if you really want stronger grip, sure, a lot of unassisted stuff is really good, but also you should be training your grip, you know what I'm saying, at home by yourself, <laughs> like we all do. Uh, but on a serious note, all sorts of wrist curls and various grippers are really, really awesome to use to train your grip in addition to that stuff. But here's the thing, if you want a maximally developed back, your back will fucking be stronger than your grip. For almost everyone in the world, especially people with the biggest backs, your back's just fucking bigger and it's gonna outpace your grip. It's like trying to calf raise and squat the same weight. You just can't fucking calf raise 400 pounds. It just, the, the muscles are smaller, they're not well as well leveraged. It just doesn't work. Not everything is gonna be in balance. So if you find yourself, especially, you know, if you're training for a year or two, yeah, don't use straps or any of that stuff, get your grip stronger, fine, right? After that, especially when you notice, like, look, I, my, my forearms are fried after a set of rows. My back doesn't really feel as much as it used to from rows. What the hell's going on? It's not rocket science. Get some straps, get some chalk. Better yet, get some Versa grips. Let your back be the thing that fails you because then it's getting the most growth. And if you're really concerned about forearm hypertrophy, just masturbate more. No, wait, I said that wrong. Do that, but also train your grip independently. The last mistake in barbell bent rows for hypertrophy is going either too heavy 
or too light. On the too heavy side, you may notice this from your own analysis of the stimulus to fatigue ratio, how much your muscles are actually taking a hit versus how fatiguing the movement is, you know, how much tension you're perceiving, how much of a pump you're getting, how much disruption you feel in the back afterwards, that rows in the five to 10 rep range, especially closer to five, sometimes you just feel like it's mostly core work at that point, the support is the hardest part, and your back just doesn't get enough time or reps to really get working or really get going. For some people that's the case, so for them rowing in the five to 10 rep range might not be great. You ask yourself, how the hell, if I have faster twitch lats or whatever, how the hell am I supposed to grow my lats, grow parts of my back uh, with the heaviest range? Well, we got two exercises that can replace the row in that regard, in that rep range. We have weighted pull-ups, which are awesome in the five to 10 rep range if you've ever done them. And we have deadlifts. Deadlifts are a fucking amazing back builder, but by definition should be done in the five to 10 rep range because deadlifts over that are just cardio, right? So save deadlifts and, and weighted pull-ups for the five to 10 rep range. What about the 20 to 30 rep range? Well, a lot of times, again, it becomes a stability problem. Your spinal rectus just start to get tired and it's not that your upper back isn't working anymore, it's that your spinal rectus and your posture and even your glutes and hamstrings sometimes can be the limiting factor. You're trying to row and you're like, I'm collapsing, I'm just getting tired, I can't maintain this position. So bent rows in the 20 to 30 rep range, some people can do them, other folks it really starts to be a factor that's limited by other things and not actually your upper back. Those are best done with chest supported rows, machine rows, cable rows, et cetera. So 20 to 30, not ideal for bent rows in most cases. Five to 10, not ideal. That means bent rows are best done, especially on a first set, if fresh, 10 to 20 rep range. That is really, really awesome for bent rows. My personal recommendation, start around sets of 15 and you're gonna feel super, super awesome. Folks, that's all I have for today. Those are the fundamental main bent row mistakes try to do a good job in your own training, perceive how much stimulus you're getting, stay away from too much fatigue, joint pain and crazy high efforts, do a really awesome job, comment, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. And if someone has a question in the comments and we don't get around to it, please feel free to answer it yourself. Thank you so much and we'll see you for our next technique video next time.